Hi, my name's Ryan Barnett. I'm 40 years old, married, and I have an 18-month-old son. I'm in my 13th year under appointment in the Rio, Texas Annual Conference, where I have served as the executive pastor of one of our denomination's largest churches, the solo pastor of a medium-sized church, and I'm currently the senior pastor of a 2,000-member county seat church. These churches have become larger, younger, and more ethnically diverse as the gospel of Jesus Christ is proclaimed and people are invited to share in the work of spreading scriptural holiness. I've been asked to share with you today because, though I'm not as young as I once was, I'm fairly unique among my clergy peers in that I am eligible to be appointed at the next 32 annual conferences I attend. 32 annual conferences. Even saying that makes me a little tired. Seriously, I don't know if I have 32 more annual conferences left in me. It's not that I don't have a passion for the gospel, and it's not that I don't love the Methodist Church. But if I'm going to serve for the next 32 years, I want to make sure it's in a church that values the gospel of Christ above all else. I want to make sure that it is a church that promotes scriptural holiness. I want to make sure it's a church that values integrity. And I want it to be in the Methodist Church. Let me be clear. While I am not interested in a new Methodist Church, I do want to be part of the next Methodist Church. United Methodism is 48 years old. Methodism is 278 years old. Part of our great tradition has been our adaptability, which has allowed us to effectively invite people to discover the joy of experiencing a holiness that's not bifurcated between personal and social, but rather embraces the entire gospel of Christ in one great movement. It's time for our Methodist Church to adapt once again. Our connectional and Episcopal polity have much to offer, they are biblical and can be effective if set free from institutionalism and re-energized for mission effectiveness. Our top-heavy bureaucracies were created at a time when we looked to centralize expertise. Today, our best, most fruitful experts in missiology, social engagement, discipleship, and the like are all leading local churches. Advances in communication and technology have eliminated the need for multi-million dollar agencies. Their primary need usurped, those agencies have allowed mission creep to lead them into areas that most of us loathe funding. Imagine if our apportionments were freed up from conference and denominational programming that do little more than thunder into an echo chamber, and instead were deployed in developing nations where the church is exploding with growth. What if we exchange the wealth of the West for African missionaries who would come and evangelize in and around our local parishes? The open secret in United Methodism is that our ministry model is no longer sustainable in its current iteration. The next Methodism is coming, in part because we can no longer afford to do business as usual. These big-picture institutional problems that continue to handicap the work of the church would be hard enough to settle even if we weren't experiencing a blistering assault from within our ranks. But let's be honest, we are. And that's what brings most of us here today. Most of us are here today because a significant minority within the global connection has rejected the teaching of Scripture and the doctrines of our church. We all recognize that something has to change. We are going to have to figure out what comes next in Methodism. I don't want to spend the next 32 years having the same fight we've been having for the last 13. No, I want to dream bigger dreams. I want to gather with all of you and imagine what's possible in the next Methodism. I know that some of the most faithful hearts, brilliant minds, and fruitful leaders in Methodism are gathering in the WCA. Together, we can influence current events in United Methodism 
We can ensure that whatever happens, our 278-year heritage of spreading scriptural holiness will continue. We don't need to create a new Methodism, but we must give shape to the next Methodism.